I mean, they don't do anything wrong. They are clean and cool. They are, I mean, they're cool. They're, they're nice. They can't understand why their prayers don't seem to always get answers. They can't understand. I mean, like uh, somebody, someone's telling me a story, something happened in Benin City. Very interesting. You know, we had this, this meeting in Benin, and there was a lady uh, who, who received healing and came up the platform to testify. And I was laying hands on people as they came up to the platform. And now came up this lady, and uh, I, I laid hands on her, and uh, she went under the power, and I said, the Lord asked me to give you one millionaire. And uh, of course she was in shock. Then I said, the Lord says I should increase it to two millionaire. Now she almost passed out. Okay. Now after the service, here's the real thing. This is what I want you to listen to. After the service, someone was carried by a a taxi driver who happened to have been in the meeting but didn't know this other fellow was in that meeting and said I saw a wonderful thing today said an amazing thing and was telling the story he said you know Pastor Chris I was in the meeting today in Christ's embassy a woman came up the platform didn't even ask for anything and Pastor Chris said God told him to give the woman one million naira and then two million naira yeah. then he said I have been asking God for only 65,000 <laughs> are you following this he said I have been asking God for only 65,000 he hasn't given it to me yet. Just think about it. The woman didn't even ask for nothing. And, and, and he had been asking for 65,000. They get it. So he's wondering. I mean, isn't it easier for God to give me 65,000 than to give that lady 2 million? Praise God. The way many people are. See, they wonder why the little miracle they're asking God for, they're not getting it. And then there's this other fellow who, in their minds, is not even a very, is not a serious Christian. How come he's getting all these miracles? That's what makes them sometimes to say that the miracles must be fake because we are not acting like them in the way they think we should act like them you know so the miracles must be fake there must be something we're doing how can we have all that money we must be stealing somehow we, 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 we must be into some drug business or something we must be doing something wrong and getting all this money there must be some deception so all the time you get all these people who come into some of our meetings and they're trying to find out where the catch is every little noise they hear they turn around <laughs> you, you, you think they're listening to the message they're not they're all the time looking for what where is the catch and as the ushers bring the up envelopes they examine 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 you know they're trying to find out what is it we've been doing Glory to God. But I want to show you those things that we believe that have made our lives beautiful. Now, don't get, don't, don't, don't let anybody deceive you. You know, sometimes some people say, ah, oh, they're writing things about Pastor Christ. Listen, all of those things they write, good or bad, they don't make any difference. Are you hearing me? When they write something good, I don't care to see it. When they write something bad, I don't care to see it. You know why? Because they are not a factor. You see? They are not a factor. So 
be smart not to even give them a hearing. Because you see, people who are at the bottom always want to drag other people to stay with them. As long as you are with them, you are their friend. You start making progress and see, you become an enemy. If we were a little church, like somebody said, a minister one time said, uh, Pastor Chris was in one ramshackle building some years ago. How can he say that God gave him money to do all the things he's doing? So I knew him a few years ago where he was having a church. And he's trying to prove I got the money from somewhere else. He says, is it not the same God that was with him then? Why didn't the God give him that money at that time? Brother, I was growing my faith all that time. Don't you understand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So you see, there are things that we believe. And they are in the scripture. I will show you the one I want that I asked you to open. You already read it. This has got to make sense to you. It has to make sense to you. Hallelujah. It's got to make sense to you. So let's read again Psalm 16 and verse 6. One to go. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, a goodly heritage. All right, now, you know, the Bible says for us to study, okay? And studying means that you should exercise some painstaking effort. To look through the word and see exactly exactly what it is saying I read lots of translations in my study so I can get all the shades and I like to also study the original from where the translations were gotten so that I can know why the translator said what he said and whether or not he's right praise the Lord so let me read to you the King James that you read and then I'll read to you another version I'll read the contemporary English version all right, and I want you to listen to the King James first. The lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Now, what's it saying? It says the lines have fallen unto me. You know, when you can read this kind of a thing, many of you have read Psalm 16, you've read the Psalms. You probably don't know what this means. It says the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. That means this man is talking about that um, there was. There was uh, an apportioning of property to different people. And they said, from here to here to here is for John Boo. From here to here to here to here to here is for Joan. And from here to here to here to here is for Andrew. And Andrew found out that his own land his own property had a, a treasure in it he found out there was oil he found out there was diamond he dug a little more and found out there was gold He's got oil, he's got diamond, he's got gold in his own property. Then he says, the lines, that means the borders. He says, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. That means an awesome inheritance. 
the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. So I found out my inheritance is better than the one Joanne got and the one that John Bull got. And I had nothing to do with it. It fell onto me. You see that? It fell my lot. Praise God. Now, I want to. That's what he's saying. Now imagine if your life, many years, this has been your contemplation. Like it's been my contemplation. You know, why the other guy was fighting with God. Oh God, do it for me, Lord, do it for me, Lord. Do it. I was saying the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. See, I was spending time digging my gold. You see that? Playing with my diamonds, pulling out my oil, while he's asking God, oh, oh God. John Bull and Joanne. They can't understand. But the lines are falling onto me. You see the mentality? Who well, our lives cannot be the same. Our lives cannot be the same. I see all the good things in my land. And they can't find nothing. So they're going to live a life of complaining and worrying. Then someone said, Well, so whose fault is it? Is it not the person that gave them the land? Yes. So what do you do? Find out what's in your land. The oil was not on the top surface. The gold was not on the top surface. The diamonds were not on the top surface, brother. Find out what you got in your land. 